continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Mia Farrow as Allison McKenzie, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Conley as Norman Harrington. Minutes ago, an ambulance pulled up to the emergency entrance of Doctors Hospital, an everyday occurrence for hospitals everywhere. A passing motorist found an unconscious girl lying by the side of a beach road. The girl was Allison McKenzie. What happened to her? Hit and run. Pupils are unequal. Looks bad. Blood pressure? High, 170 over 100. Well, the vital signs. Well, her breathing's normal, but she's got some bad contusions. Any signs of skull fracture? I want to take some pictures. Similar rigidity. Subarachnoid hemorrhage. It's quite possible. Is it safe to do a spinal? I want to wait. There's some pressure. Have the Carsons been notified? Well, not yet. I wanted to do that myself. Well, you go ahead. I'll go to X-ray. Why don't you answer it? Allison? Uh, this is Mike Rossi. Is that you, Elliot? No, his father. Elliot's not home yet. Well, can I talk to Connie, please, Mr. Carson? And would you stand by? Oh. Michael Rossi. Hello, Michael. Elliot isn't here yet, but we expect him any minute. Connie, this is about Allison. She's here at the hospital. Why? What's wrong? Well, she's been injured. Mike! Connie, now listen to me. We're already treating her. We'll talk about it when you get down here. Connie? Huh? Let Eli drive you down here. What happened? What happened? Hello, I'm home. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late. <laughs> What's the matter? Mike Ross has just called. What is it, Tommy? It's Allison. She's been hurt. She in the hospital? Let's go. Mr. Harrington. Stephen. And how are you, Betty? Hello, Mr. Harrington. You're looking well. Thank you. Uh, won't you join us? Mm -hmm. For a moment, thank you. Well, I often wished our town had more good dining spots, but there's one compensation. You can be fairly sure of seeing a familiar face. And a familiar menu. That too, of course. I doubt if they've changed the dish in 20 years. Uh, Miss. Would you care for something? No, thank you. A scotch and soda, please. If they haven't, I'll testify to that. Your birthday dinners, I'd almost forgotten about them. Stephen's mother used to bring him here every year on his birthday. Oh. It was quite a treat. 
I'm sure it was. Are you staying at the inn? Yes, I am. Oh, so Stevie, you'll be neighbors. Small world. Very. You know, I never would have expected Stephen to come back here to live. Where did you think he'd go? Well, New York, Chicago, Los Angeles. Some big city that offered a big challenge to an ambitious young man. Well, maybe Peyton Place offers enough of a challenge. Evidently. I guess I'm still just a small town boy at heart. Stephen, uh, may I ask you a professional question? Sir? I seem to remember there's some way for the defense to have a trial changed to another town. Oh, you're talking about a motion for a change of venue. It can be done. Well, if there are grounds, but I'm not so sure it's a good idea. Well, we don't have to talk about it now. I'll be by in the morning. Excuse me, Mr. Cord. You yeah. ordered on the telephone. Oh, thank you. Excuse me. So you're seeing Stephen Cord. We're friends. Mr. Harrington, was it Rodney's idea to move the trial? Well, it's wise to consider all the possibilities. But did he ask you? We can only take this one thing at a time, Vinay. For now, let's get through the preliminary hearing, then we'll see what happens. Not that I don't appreciate your concern. Do you? I mean that sincerely. I'm happy to see you're making a new life for yourself, Betty. New friends, new job. That's a fine beginning. For what? Well, you're young and lovely. I'm sure the best is still ahead. You sound as though nothing had ever happened. Because I pay you an honest compliment. What compliment? That you've had the good sense to put the past behind you. I haven't forgotten it. Are you sure it's over and done with? Nothing's over and done with, Mr. Harrington. You ought to know that. You do know it, or you wouldn't be afraid that people will take their feelings for you out on Rodney. Betty, you haven't changed as much as I thought. Neither have you, Mr. Harrington. Tell Stephen I said good night. You mean he called you himself at this hour, about the mill? He found me at the police station with Rodney. Mr. Payton thinks that his grandson needs a lawyer with a reputation in trial work. Well, did you tell him you had suggested this yourself? Yeah. Then, of course, I had to tell him who vetoed the idea, which made him madder than a nest of hornets. That's an understatement. He was blaming me for Leslie Harrington's return, as if I could have prevented it. Well, it sounds like Mr. Payton was in excellent form. Oh, by the way, I ran into Harrington at the inn. Hmm. What's on his mind? Brace yourself. Mr. Harrington, may I sit down, please? Why, of course, Betty. I only ended our conversation because I thought we were both on the verge of saying things we might regret later. I thought it was because you didn't want to listen. Well, I suppose I am more used to giving advice than receiving it. I know. That's why I asked whether it was your idea or Rodney's to move the trial. I said it was only a possibility. But did you talk to him about it? No, I didn't. You're doing exactly the same thing you did before. You're trying to make all Rod's decisions without even asking him. And why are you so concerned, Betty? You're no longer married to Rodney. That was one of your decisions. I did what was best for him then, and I'll continue to now. Well, I know you're his father, but you act as though he were still a little boy. And you, Betty, you act as if you still care just a little bit more than you should. I respect Rodney, Mr. Harrington. I didn't before. But you went away, and for the first time, he began to act like a man. Don't cheat him out of that. The only gift you ever gave him, worth having. Miss Carson, Miss Carson, uh, will you be seated, please, and I'll find out what I can for you. Oh, I'll be right back. Oh, no, let me go in. You stay here with Dad. Uh, Sergeant Gardner. Oh, well, 
Mr. Carson. Say, I'm sorry about your daughter. Is she? Well, she was alive when we brought her in. What happened? She was struck by a car. Hit and run. I can't just sit here. Honey, wait. She was hit by a car. She's still alive. Sergeant God doesn't know how badly hurt she's been. Please, sweetheart, go and sit down. Please. <laughs> How did it happen? Well, she must have been walking down the beach. It looked as if she started across the highway when she got hit. No sign of who did it? Oh, Bob, how is she? Oh, we don't know yet. Michael's with her. Well, she... We'll know soon. I... I haven't told Elliot about coming to see you. You didn't tell him? Well, I, I thought I'd wait until you had a more definite answer. Well, that could be quite a while. Constance, I think perhaps you should tell him. Oh, no, please. He, he has enough to think of now. All right. Michael Ross is doing a spinal tap. It will tell us what we have to know. <laughs> 